Navi's turn to pick. Team Secrets turn to pick. Yeah, based on, I mean, they finished top two of their style air qualifier over Navi um, and seem to have been the more well rounded team. They, I mean, been the more, their Ross has been together longer. So I think just that alone with the better Five results means Secret came in as favorites. Reserve time. different opening from Navi at least. I guess Secret uh, with the slider leave things pretty, I mean I guess ended up being not here they had in game one but leave things pretty open. The Shadow Demon ignored so far. There isn't the Luna to go with it um, but still of course always a very good support hero to have although maybe not so great. It's like Rubik or the Weaver. Weaver is pretty good hero to get on top of Shadow Demon. You don't really care about getting disrupted so much as Weaver and uh, Rubik also you can always steal the disruption so Maybe not so appealing to pick the hero, but is always a, a pretty stable, good support. Mm -hmm. Navi's turn to ban uh, support Weaver, and it, and I think it, in some ways it limits what the enemy team. Can pick up here in this example, in Lifestealer or Slardar, that's a less likely to be seen when there's a Weaver on the other side because you don't Ten actually uh, work a Weaver in or that it matches up really well yeah. against Five that duo. Remaining. Team Secret, gonna go for the second pick, Disruptor, nice controlling hero versus Weaver, Reserve time. Support or not, they will have a support. Yeah, I, absolutely, and it's nice in the because you can run it safe lane, off lane, you can do it in aggro lanes. Even very rarely, you maybe see it in the mid lane. Not quite as potent there, but uh, is yeah, very very flexible as far as the hero is concerned. So that's where you don't want to invest too many heavily into countering the hero when Navi can just put it in that full position role if they want to. Team secrets turn to. Um. I think the Shadow Fiend, Shadow Fiend's a big pick for them. Mid one's been really consistently high performing in the hero. I think also at the moment it's one of the better three, four mid hero picks when you've got these kind of armor drafts. Uh, it's just like a nice team for the line. I mean, we saw a couple of games of Mickle playing where he had good success in the one off remaining. game as well, game two. But um, I think that's probably where Secret's looking for their mid lane. Uh, other than that, for Navi, uh, the Pudge is a common support pick. There's the SF ban. Um, to ban. I guess the OD is the other hero that both teams play quite a bit in the mid lanes. Uh, potential pick, although it doesn't pair as well with the physical damage kind of oriented drafts we're seeing with the Weaver Swarm and the Slather Amp. I think that that's fine, especially for Navi. I mean, Swarm is, can be Ten nice. Seconds. It's Akuzu Roshan. OD still plays pretty nicely around their, their draft, seconds. gives you a set as well. Reserve time. Mm. Uh, here, not going to be banned away. Navi, Navi have a chance to pick it up. Secret pick. could also use it if they want to run the. Yeah, that that looks like a pretty high value pick here, as far as something that both teams are going to look to want to snag up potentially. Unless Navi has something else in mind, but they're, they're off line. Remaining. Uh, yeah, with the with the slider, which Five has mostly been oh, yeah, like slider more and more, we're seeing it as a, predominantly a, a support hero, right? Full position that is, rather exactly. than the uh, the off lane. Uh, the darks are one of the best heroes to combo with it. I want to say. Look, I was looking at some of Team Navi's drafts early today. And I think they to... did run on Dark in a couple of games. Perhaps just, yeah, the aggro tri lane, the lane pressure. Weaver, Rick, already very good at dominating the lanes, and that's something which Undying also brings to the table. Uh, as far as dual lanes go, they, they I mean, they tied two RN heroes remaining. with the Undying and the Punch. Uh, now, if they now get the Sanking, which instantly my gut reaction to Sanking is more to think of him as an offlaner, but could be that full position 
not Result not great in the full position, I feel, compared to the Flame, but it is flexible, I think. Again, that's a, a strength of Na'Vi with some of these picks like the Weaver, same thing. Like You, you don't necessarily know for sure where that hero is going to go. Navi's turn to pick. I, sorry, what was, which hero was that? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's still okay, just you can make up for that Ten elsewhere. Um, but it looks like they're going to run the slaughter as an offlaner. They up Earth Spirit, so there's some Five more guaranteed remain. control. They've got three heroes all very good against the Weaver now. The slaughter, Disruptor, and the Earth time. Spirit. And this is the hero I was kind of looking at one if I, like, Navi would even run. I don't think they play much of the Earth Spirit for RM. I think it would have been a good pick for them as well. It's one of the, the most successful four position heroes on the current match, but you've also got to have a very good Earth Spirit play to, to justify the pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five yeah. seconds remaining. Reserve time. Ten seconds remaining. Silencer. Navi's Ooh. turn to ban. Uh, yeah. I don't think... Th Does that hero do well against the TA? You can use the curse against the refraction, but it doesn't strike me as an amazing TA counter, so perhaps more likely safe lane hero team secret 10 seconds remaining very interesting pick up here Five does mean they can follow remaining. up that slider initiation with like an instant global so there's no kind of responsibility available from navi Reserve navi time. don't have good heroes to go into like items to dispel the global silence like there's no reason you don't i mean eventually get a yule scepter but it's not really like an ideal item to get and it's also not like an instant dispel you use yourself you'll see yourself while global silence it's not like you can protect a teammate by stunning them. You're yours yourself up in the air. So um, it's going to take. It's going to be hard to to fight into that global silence, and Navi will have to use that cooldown uh, to advantage. Team secrets turn to ban. A different core for uh, hmm. Navi. I guess what. I guess the question more is like, yeah, what would that call be in my mind? Um, the the more tempting life sealer, I guess, Ten potentially could come in, but he's another hero that gets really crippled by a lot of these silences. So he heroes that can get out of some of the silences. Navi's Yay, mid or Team uh, Secret, maybe. Yeah. I, does B B T A or maybe maybe we are going to see the secret? I think P I can win the lane necessary. So one of those like. You slightly lose lane, but your Ten hero is still very good against TA come mid game. And we're going to see Earth Spirit, of course, probably be kind of influential in that mid lane remaining. as well. So I think Secret are thinking they can get away with a slightly disadvantageous mid lane if they have the Earth Spirit's influence. But last game we saw Dandy completely destroy MP. That CS differential between them, especially in the deny category, was very lopsided. So I imagine we, they go back to mid one playing that mid lane, and partly because of how ugly and one sided. That matchup was last game, but it is it is a tough matchup whether it's PA or Silencer. Yeah, I think BK Jug maybe Ten gets you can get away with because of the Manta build against the Silencers. Doesn't get you some of the other stuff necessary like the Static Storm, but Venge carried so very tanky does eventually get a BKB. Game, I imagine. Uh, well, be a support, of course, as well. We're talking about we're talking about carries to replace the Weaver, but um, I want to say it's probably a Venge core. I think Pycat's played it a few of the Navi games so far already, and I do feel like the Weaver gets pretty hard counted by 
four of these, I mean, really five of these picks fight that well into the PA as well. I guess we'll have to wait and see, Nav. You're holding yeah. off on picking their heroes. I think uh, you used to be able to get to see the and... people as they pick their heroes in the, this oh. waiting screen. They... Oh, you're right. Got rid of that. There it is. Here My cat and spirit. So you are yeah. on the money. Mineral off lane weaver active. Ah. Where we're, we're, and we talked about it as a possibility, but we were really, I think, thinking that at the end of the draft. That's true. I do kind. Of, I do kind of like it though, because I feel like you still need to have some decent farm priority on weaver um, to make this hero uh, work in this matchup. In part because I think the the BKB is going to be necessity for the weaver. And then on top of that, uh, not sure how well Weaver's support is going to be able to deal. For example, the Earth Spirit's going to have a lot more impact in the the laning phase when it comes to that roaming potential. And then going to mid game, there's a lot more team fight power from Secret um, than this Weaver is going to be able to put comparatively other supports. So I think you do need to like you needed to be able to shift to Weaver um, a position other than support. And it feels a little yeah. bit better. And as a as a four, yeah, the sand king I think can kind of match the earth spirit a bit. But when you're roaming around with the boots, you run into the earth spirit, you can like look to actually trade blows a bit. If you have a teammate there you can with the, the barrow strike, and you can cause problems. Whereas a weaver doesn't look too potent. Like there's not like a good killing combo. Like weaver TA, you've got no blows, no stuns. Like the roaming weaver with the core that you've got doesn't seem like it's gonna necessarily have that big of an impact. So we'll see mid one playing the mid silencer. Yeah, what what are your bets? Is this, this is, are we gonna see yes. like uh, max curse or something, or do you think you're just gonna see it a little bit more regularly played and maybe a more farm game with Glaive? Plus, so Baby Knight used to do a bit of this and the, for the uh, the old days when now Cloud Nine, where he would go max Glaives by level seven with like one point of the other two spells. I, I think the Arca, the other spell that's really good to max uh, and does a lot of harass damage. It just doesn't give you as much mid damage. Put necessarily, there will be. I mean, you don't expect the offlaner to be curious, I think, but Miz mid one is not bringing salves out. All right, man, it's and Dandy gonna... doesn't have refraction, he's like dead. Wait, what? Oh, a little bit more fairy fire, uh, gonna be enough damage okay, on that. Click, so he does have the healing salve, yeah. he will be good. The weaver unable to snipe the courier as it's not showing up. Blink because it was gonna be back here with the Tuckinesis, but. Clearly, do not have enough damage to actually get that kill. Puppy popping the mid laner shrine here and is going to return to try and get a quick what? kill on Dendi once again, but the, the, the word is already in place to spot him out here. Yeah, that's. About using your mid laner shrine, but uh, he's got his health coming out to mid lane at least, but. But never a fan of, fan of popping that shrine. And it does it does allow Puppy to come This is a play that could pay up, but. There is that ward there. Dendi going to pop the shrine of his own. I mean, he sees Ghost Spirit back to lane with full HP. He probably realizes that shrine was popped as well. So, mid one, we'll have to play without. But he's ideally going to just try not to get harassed too much. But with the side blades, that's something where Dendi can put pressure onto mid one. Puppy going to throw out the roll here. Dendi tries to sidestep it, but doesn't actually hit it. Puppy is going to be able to slow down Dendi enough to be able to get that first blood. Through the reaction and the constant damage coming in for mid one, but it proved to be enough to bring down the mid laner of Nop. Yeah, combining the orb of them coming out of the lot there is this is the really mid lane. Now that this small advantage, mid one can just continue to spam that arcane curse's bottle and the clarity are coming out to give him some extra stamina. And he is not having a fun time, he is far away from his own bottle. Down to uh, other counter. The Templar Assassin mid, uh, mid one secret silencer. I'm not. I feel like without the Earth Spirit, if TA does just. I want to well, at least even in this oh, matchup. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. If anything, TA I think could win this matchup. You know, not straight up one v one, but yeah, the Earth Spirit is where it turns this match. Now, now that Silencer has an edge, you do very well. But the thing is, Silencer is actually not farming all that well. The CS is even between the two so you're going for the kills and like looting some here and there and when Dendi is going for CS he is getting the nice here and there so uh, you've got to keep up this aggression because Dendi will heavily farm 
a uh, silencer with the use of the chance. Bottom lane. Hunts back. Hunts Hunts trouble, he's so. down. He's got five seconds till it's up. He tries to juke his way into the trees. He's a magic wand. Two seconds. He'll be good. They should be anyway. He's getting a little <laughs> cheeky. Turn around on NP, yeah. daring him to try and make another dagger throw. I like that play. Go to yeah, cheeky little Gemini attack off and damage the camp. He has plenty of reason now. So. We'll see how things go. Another stop pop by Dendi in the mid lane. This is slowing down that bottle as much as possible is really the name of the game right now because that's when you can start like picking up runes, jungling a bit more efficiently, having more access to action. Tries to let the ball just smash it mid. Doesn't nail that one. Very hard to initiate with ball mash nowadays. <laughs> Once upon yeah. a time, you could do that as an earth spirit. Not anymore. Tezu actually picks up the Iron Talon. Uh, I guess he's assuming he's not going to be receiving a whole lot of help from Earth Spirit, so the Rubik Spirit Lane appears to be yeah. dangerous enough that Tezu needs to jungle. So the next bit of action, presuming Tezu plays a pink jungle, uh, going to be bottom as well, where we've had this constant little battle between Weaver, the PA, uh, and Sang King matched up against the Disruptor. And with the higher levels in Burrow Strike, we might be able to see Navi pick up a kill here, where they're and have short. Yeah. One thing I wonder if Kezu does boots, he could be right on mid with the uh, Earth Spirit, like smoke up with Earth Spirit slider, level two sprint, level two plenty uh, to kill a TA with. So I think that's like a surprise plug and do slider. Uh, he has the money for his boots now. Doesn't have a smoke, which is be the one thing they're lacking. But even without smoke, there's actually no vision on that north side of this mid lane. Comes in. V. They're gonna try and go for a Rubik and King rotation. And King does have that level two burrow strikes, not quite as limited in range as it used to be. We're hoping to be able to catch mid one, but a C puppy is kind of locking their way. This ward is kind of wear out. Puppy spots it, realizes that's been causing him a lot of issues in lane. There's no pops on the side of Navi as well, but they haven't been scouted just yet. They're gonna throw another ward here. Spot Puppy, not gonna go for it. Now the kick comes out, the roll misses, and Iver will be able to get some distance. Puppy needs to throw back and a highlight die. They need to be able to stay ahead of Glimpse. Glimpse guy's not gonna be able to get him, so it's only level one Glimpse. RMN comes back, goes for the kill in mid one, trying to his life to make sure that happens. General's gonna be able to pick up a lot. It looks like Highlight die may also go down with Dendi now coming in. MP, he's gonna join the fight as well with the dag in. Puppy's trying to make his jukes around, but Dendi finds his old friend. Gonna get Highlight die as well with the help of General. They turn now together to fight up against MP, but Kezu made a surprise entrance. Dendi got a mana. No more refraction charge for They fight against MP as best they can, but it's fight they cannot win. General is forced away. The only surviving member of Navi in that engagement. It's like, it was a total disaster for Na'Vi. They killed the Silencer. Uh, they trade, what, two supports? Both teams lose their mid laner and two supports. And, I mean, it was five secret heroes committing to that while Na'Vi had the same top lane. So I think it's a, I think it's a slight Na'Vi win. Uh, keeping yeah. the vent farm. Uh, just Dendi gets bottle. Like, he spent his money before he dies. So Dendi doesn't really lose too much. There. He gets back to play. He's level six now. It gives him some. It actually helps him recover despite dying at the end. I would call that recovery for him. And now he's got to kill himself. It's six that has the one. traps. Unzo. General's been very good with his like early game pressure. He rotates mid. He, he's he came before that even started to help make sure things arrive for them. Now he comes mid again. General's been very. <laughs> Alright, and realizes a little bit too late. Sandstorm's under the entry and will be getting the kill to MP. Kezu's in some trouble. He's going to be telekinesis pulled back, but uh oh, oh, what did you do? He was actually taking all the tower shots that whole entire time, so he is going to go down here. Kezu survives. He's going to pull back on Pike. Not healthy enough to threaten that hero. Oh, this is going to perhaps stabilize things a bit for Kezu now. He's level 6. Back to the First, gonna get what farm he can. Pycat scoffs aggressive swap though at top. He wants to solo kill. I think he may pay for this with his life if he's not careful though. Oh, Pycat, you crazy. Gets the support. But, oh, the middle puppy. Now the counter from Armin. They get the burrow strike. Mid one gets a ton of Pycat, but it doesn't do anything. Is Pycat's just ready to full right click down the Earth Spear and will survive through all of that. So Pycat, not so crazy it wow. seems. Hey, so he's got 1100 HP. Of his. It's. Ridiculous how tanky Venge actually can be as a core, and this is a big reason why this hero is made in that core role. You just get 
it's, you're so stat heavy and you just become this great frontliner. And again, this is with all the silences, uh, they don't necessarily have a ridiculous amount of damage output, but the silences can be very problematic. Having a tanky in the front can be very beneficial to you. And he still needs a bit of recovery time. He's sitting at 25 and 12 in CS. Uh, that results in yep. 2400 net worth. But of course, we said able to get some pretty decent recovery, right? Vegetal Spirit can get quite active, and Bendy can start playing off those pretty well, especially if they can get another kill on a mid. We'll swap back into the Burrow Strike. Beautiful combination of zones coordinated by Nabi. Get yet another kill on that mid lane. Yeah, this is one more. Trap. He can't, mm. Trying to get a raid Ooh. missile, but he gets sent first. Still, though, he looks like the gen might be able to get this. Silence on the general prevents him from shukuching forward. Won't be able to kill left port, but the mid lane tower is taking a lot of damage and might yeah. just go down. Points in Vengeance, so I think this can be bended. Lightstone, so it should be a, a free T1 tower, though secret. They're keeping in numbers here in the triple. One of those, they decide to take the cautious approach. They don't want to give up the lives, take that tower. Come back for it later. Great aggression. And this is this is my experience with mid silencer games, like be it watching it in pro games. Hold that thought, Kezu. He's gonna get one on now. They are a man back to the They see the mass TDs, especially MP. That is a hero that nobody wants to be near right now, and poor Viver is gonna get a <laughs> up close and personal time. The damage actually wears up here, and they are gonna be able to get another dagger, and there it is, the pullback. And he knows what he's done for. MP is going to have a pretty fast desolator at this point. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be with the amp damage. This PA can have a fast. Time if you need to, because yeah, this is where I feel like it's one of these heroes that the first four or five minutes, but once rotation starts happening around the map, Silencer really struggles and dies very easily, as we're seeing. Went in with some extra force. Pycat will TP in. The help of the over Frost Mage, this actually makes a very big difference, That's... giving everyone that eight armor bonus against damage to PA. Yeah, nice, nice neutral to have. Would you rather have the Ogre or the, the Satyr? question i guess i think the Uber for being able to spread that damage around but they're probably clutch scenarios right with that anti damage say on weaver yeah. where you <laughs> you desperately want that purge at the right time yeah the, the, getting getting rid of the amp and slowing enemies to yeah, going in on yeah, he's yeah. getting out the whole entire situation for seek secret or still in we didn't expect it they're gonna lose pike board and let pike no mp's got gonna be able to come to Get the magic missile. Back, high cat turns. Puppy at least, but now Andy oh, with a haste through. A haste to pick up. He joins in. They trade one for four. Pick it one for five. His mid one, he might as well be a support at this point. He's dropped down so far, and that worth has not progressed yeah. at all because of the constant not notifications on his ass. Kind of where I'm at when I first saw sound, I think I felt like it needs to be in the safe lane because this hero gets rotated on so easily. It needs you. And he's going for a fast Midas, which I think you've got to almost rush the full stuff from this hero because of how mobility he is, so that you just don't just instantly die in these fights. Going for this Midas, to me, just means he's going to keep on dying more and more in, in these classes. But Silas, great crit here, RMN. There it is. Just before the Silent Base and the Burrush Pick with the crit necessary. He's in the Roach Pit. And they've stolen the Corrosive Haze. It's the easiest rush of their life. Beetles, Corrosive Haze, Vengeance. But every Midas armor in the. Minus 23 threshold for a second there, then the beetle died. Uh, my my mind trying to work that one. I was like, how the hell did they have Weaver, Vengeful Spirit, TA, and Star on all in one <laughs> team? Wow. <laughs> Still in corrosive phase from Bivita's quite work. Work against Urshan. In 12, 12 minutes in, 4,000 gold lead, 2,000 experience lead for the I think the people. concern for. For Spirit is going to turn into like PA versus the world. PA is going to have to slow kill, like do all the damage in team fight during global silence and around the. Like this team offer good controls at the start of crap. There's the Earth Spirit with the smash, the silences, kinetic field is there with the static storm, but damage is going to come almost entirely from MP. Until he gets the BKB with the Desert, it was very fragile. There's good magic burst damage coming from the magic missile, the bus strike. I mean, you're throwing even like the fade button and all that, the storm damage kind of cut up as well. He's going to play him very cautious, choose his time well when he enters the fight. Looking like not the bolt in this game, well, it's just general, building up steam. This is, uh, they put on a 
really good performance game one, and it seems like it's an even cleaner performance, excluding Dendi's death here. It looks like he's going to be caught out by the rotation secret here in the top lane. Rested Navi for taking bottom. Yeah, Dendi, quite a bit alone there. With good presence on the top side of the map. Secret will look to trade this bottom lane for top. Will be a tier two tower potentially though if Navi press forward, which it looks like they are. Angling to do both general and pike putting this push effort and I'm already kind of looped in behind the tower. He's like, all right, if C show top in this tower, no one's going to be able to defend this one. And it does look like it's going to be the case. With a 5 4 advantage, Secret do not feel like they've got a really good tactical position to fight it by the way. More to ensure a pretty here for general. That's a very big, very early soft when the safe planer is currently operating on. Looks like he's going to be picking up Ant next. Makes sense. Talk about how from the safe lane core we want to be the old Manta hero that could potentially see both. Yeah, more damage up, but I guess the Manta hero maybe thinking like he wants to save the. Seconds. I, I think this is one of those things where Weaver can go full with his item build if he wants. Like General can go even like BKB after the Lincoln Sphere, and Navi do not like damage up. Or like between the the who's going to detonate. I mean, there's going to be a Sankey at some point with a Blink Epicenter. There's I mean, there's a Venge as a core who's very farm right top than worth. Weaver is not like uh, there's no unlike where. Uh, Eric wrong where he went two dents with his items when he needed to down this game doesn't matter so much for girl Dyer's top tower is uh, under incl attack. be with you on that one two minutes until the Aegis is reclaimed secrets they want to halt their aggression and still uh well that is gone but it does it does seem like secret need to start being on the aggress sometime soon maybe they have to wait for the age but they certainly cannot let um silencer especially since uh ultimate global silence is is so dependent on getting the initiation first. It's not a very reactive spell a lot of the mm -hmm. times. So if they can actually be smoke and setting the, the pace for this game, I'll have a lot better chance and Snavi's level. Smoking into the Aegis, not necessarily, I think it's actually kind of a good idea because it could catch them by surprise. You're smoking towards a lot of your vision. So it's a good place to take that. The problem is, Navi have the same idea. They have well, so you head to the north side of the map and MP does not want to get caught out here. He is going to tuck himself back near his tower. And I imagine Navi will ideally look to get some deep wards here. They've only got the one on the roof. All MPs walk near them. And he, there goes the global time. Oh, it stops the epicenter. That's going to be pretty decent. And Bibber's going to be his target here as Puppy rolls in with a big time combination. Doing a lot of damage. Dandy set. Six one laid out by Puppy as well. They're dropping like flies now as the physical does not finish up. Any one of these heroes, our man comes in with two man burrow strike. Maybe a lot. Pycat does manage to pick up one, looking for the second one now. As P jumps in, our man with the amp fight damage. MP, he wants a bigger kill. General starts running over there. It's good about it. Done up a little bit. Highlight die will finally drop to general. He's dropping lower and lower. But this arcane curse mid one's actually going to be able to pick up that kill as MP jumps in to finish off Pycat. Now he lose the fight dramatically and secret. All three cores staying alive and finishing off not beast. Whoa, that's some turnaround there. They managed to just get back in time to group up and bite around the PA. That global silence came at the, the perfect time as well. It was like, like one more follow up stun. Like, if they'd managed to just get off like a magic missile onto the PA, they probably would have been able to kill off MP during that stun duration and that fight wouldn't have gone as badly. But just being able to global before that follow up stun came, came Navi. The world of difference and secret boosted up after that. Want to go again? They need to be careful because now without global silent, if Navi can get numbers in this area, I think Navi will have a, a good way to take a fight here, even without sinking blink. They knew. They knew too. Uh, it's like you don't always have to throw that account uh, awards with your uh, smoky, but against Templar Assassin, I think you do. Yeah. They got spotted out by a trap. Under uh, trying to take high. high Actually gonna push out. Pocket is gonna be immediately up here with the static storm. The stack end. Hey, that I'm not sure what kind of movement they thought Secret was taking there. Yep. Yeah. Very patient. Little ramp on the south side of the river. I'm gonna show, and eventually Pycat does, and 
it's taken out, out as a result of it. And it is, I mean, for a while it felt like they were fine with a blink tag, but I think or at that point, Secret of starting to win these fights because they've got the initiation. That slot of blink crush uh, is going to be like the best way to start a fight. Whereas for Navi, until they get a blink dagger on Sand King, aren't able to be the ones jumping and initiate. Against the Silent King, you want to be in that position. Right. Pushes forward, sees if he can find anybody for a glimpse of the target. Yep. No such thing though. Tier 1 tower will go uncontested. Team Secret. What they can do from here? They push out aggressively like we thought they needed to do, but they did that once. Do you think they continue to pit against Navi, try and keep them on the back foot? Uh, I mean, ideally, you want to set your up to be able to at least keep vision around the push pit. Roche respawn coming in the next three to four minutes. So, um, I, I don't think they have too many smokes left at this point. They've kind of through them over the last five minutes of game, but they're kind of at a point where I think they want to fall back and play at a slower pace now. They're going to go for a... He looks like an armored on side. I was wondering if Kezu was going to go for the Midas, but it seems like he's got a different idea. Um, but got the Midas on the silencer. The PA BKB is where they get really strong. So that's where and not to worry about the lockdown and control from the Sand King engine. His game gets... Are very close. Some of those big ticket items, and then maybe they can resume the aggression from there. The global silence is still going to be rather effective for Navi for the time being with uh, support sand king. We talked about how, like with the offlane sand king, you'll have to get the old scepter eventually. But support sand king doesn't have that opportunity. Uh, Manta is a little bit delayed here for Pike Cat as he's gone on in so many engagements. General is just operating off here for now, so they still have big mid-game strength around the, uh, this global ability. From the Manta isn't necessarily going to help you if you get caught or jump by the slider. Like that blink crush mm -hmm. into static storm that we've seen a couple fights in a row is going to completely destroy you. It's where you'd rather have the BKB, so uh, Navi are going to have to approach these fights very differently, oh, even when got some of these items. Initiation is an RM and trying to the neutral way to that last 200 gold that's needed blink dagger. But meanwhile, BKB refers to many items for secret. Yeah, I think the the game looks very different for Navi with their blink daggers. So like having a TA and Sanking with a blink could be an instant dead disruptor, Earth Spirit, even someone like a silencer just get blink stunned by a Sanking, blink melt strike, it's just instantly deleted. So uh, Navi's approach to fights is through these blink daggers, and I think that where those last couple days of secret were really took, took it by not having uh, those gap loads. Rip, what's their vision like? They don't have a whole lot of aggressive vision. They don't see too many heroes, so I think they're kind of grouped up, maybe anticipating some sort of smoke rotation or something about now. Take them out of high ground and just seeing what is going to be happening, but I'll be spending farming right now. They've got the, the blink finished up on both Dendi as well as Arm. So quick, fast initiations can still win them the fights against this beak being global silent. I think this position, like a, we have no just camp high ground position and wait and see what happens. Like they don't want to, if they show too many heroes bottom, they just getting jumped and initiated around the road. Even it's not that their opponents are going to take approach, but someone could get jumped. Uh, even with the shrine that they too, that if it gets jumped, they instantly get deleted. That's the, the nature of these blink daggers on Navi. Okay, so Na a secret one actually have everyone alive to stop off. They're just going to defend bottom with some illusions, which is a nice little room pickup. So I'd say it's not with the team at the moment, and Navi, Biver... Uh, oh, he's actually... Secret a, not uh, expecting uh, many of these Navi members here. That was awkward as hell. Yeah, I think they, they see Biver. They probably think, okay, there's four or five here with... He was like entirely alone with the exception of RMN slightly to the north but I don't think RMN would have blitzed stun to save the route they do have very good vision of east side around this pop map yeah. of the map now still so traps very good for keeping vision on the navi side like the with sentry there there's still a trap the just constantly like that they have the, the ward in place to be able to get that it's in they're going to commit everything they have to bring down this Harry. They know how important yep. he is for sustained damage That's a in these team fights. It's either a Roche or a buyback. I don't 
Navi necessarily commit their Venge buyback, considering how much Pycat's farm has already fallen off. I think this is where you say, let's angle more towards the late game. Venge's actually going to be pressuring bottom lane. I like this play, but it's such a fast roach that Secret can quickly come back to defend. Looks like a minimum damage was done on the objectives on the B side. They could, uh, a bit of damage on that tier 2 top, nothing on the tier 3 at bottom. Are they gonna try for a quick kill on me here? Take off, they could, but no. He can't actually finish him up. He's, He's tanky. significantly tanky with that value buckler. Ah, what a puppy see that is. Yeah, I mean, he gets so tanky like, on his summer supports. He plays a bit greedy and gets more fun than most. And he's like, vid booster, buckler, raindrop, and earn. And like, all six of these items give him like some decent survivability. Yeah, that's, that's, uh... We can, uh, the Crimson Guard, maybe, later on. That'll, that'll be a nice <laughs> damage block since the win those bugs. Yeah, all the, all the Navi damage output is really going to be physical damage this game. The Sank is not really looking like a, a big threat as far as damage output goes. We'll have a level 2 epicenter soon, but... All the three are entirely physical. This is a great game for a Crimson Guard, and like, Puppy's not really that far away from it. A couple of towers or one team fight, and he's going to have a, pretty much enough money to compete it. Dyer's middle tower. Is you mean the split objectives? He's sticking away from NP. Rest of secret as they push down the tier two tower. See, it as uh, uh, secret. A TP to one side lane or the other if there's any opportunities for Navi to find a quick pick on somebody. Well, Navi kind of posturing around this top lane with Iron Man. Will, will be another Earth Spirit TP. Will Iron Man get him this time? I don't think they're even going to try. Uh, they, they learned their lesson from last time. This guy's yeah. too tanky and they're too quick with the TPs. We can't get him. Uh, and he does manage to spawn out. A couple of these heroes rotating over. Thank the trap. Dendi's just looking for efficiency's sake to maximize his farm underneath <laughs> the nose of Secret. He does finally force himself to TP back. Bottle of full space for General to farm in top lane, and that's about it. Yeah, Iron Man blinks out, pushes the lane with a sandstorm. This is kind of the split push time for Navi. They're like, all right, they've got Aegis. They've just fight any down all the towers. We can defend the bottom lane. We can't defend either of these towers, most likely. Let's pull the back to end this top lane so Iron Man pushes out one. Hit Puppy kind of comes back. It's this the tug of war between Puppy and Iron Man as far as this top lane creepy room goes. But Puppy, he just feels confident his team can push without him. There's also a shrine close enough to this bottom lane that should it look like a big fight's about to break out, he can still at least TP and get there like partway through the fight. And you know your team with an Aegis and a BKB PA are not going to lose the fight in the first like 10 seconds. Oh, it looks like they are. Navi don't want to force this real quickly. Rotated, but then Puppy went off map. He backed away from yeah. that, defending that. Oh, they've got Dendi's BKB, that's why. Okay, this is uh, definitely going to be a big pickup. As he looks for the initiation, Dendi's already picked up the one. Disruptor's down, NP's going to be up next. They managed to get the stun on him. There goes that Aegis. Kez caught by the bugs. He's not going to be able to reinitiate with that. Now he's immediately peppered away. But Dendi, BKB activated by MP, and they blow up Dendi before a refraction can come back. A silence activated. High cats now fighting into Puppy. Gets the swap out. Turns and fights a little bit more. The center's here, but the BKB still activated by the MP. Dodges that damage. And they'll lean up Nami members. One, two, and maybe a fourth in RMN. Yeah, he's not making it out. Spotted out. Secret. Managed to block him down. And would start off with Navi on the BKB on Dendi. I, I personally thought they were going to wait for the BKB on High before they, they tried to get yeah. into a big engagement. But... They, I, they, they felt they spotted an opportunity. I think they were, it was a very, very ballsy from Navi, but they instantly take out the disruptor. So there's no disruptor ultimate to worry about. They know Puppy's not in the fight, so they turn it into what's effectively at least temporarily a five v three. So they, they feel like, all right, it's worth taking a five v three fight where we pop the BKB early. They break the ages too. Like they killed MP's first life without losing too much. What? Couldn't catch on the trees. That armlet made him just too tanky. He was even able to armlet toggle after he got low and the Weaver was trying to chase him down and Kezu had got any different item build. I think they kill Kezu and that fight goes very differently. But really good play from Kezu to stay alive as well as if he's second life. He also got the damage on the Dendi put BKB, which meant that Dendi melted PA second life. I was looking to be able to pick up the MKB to try and counter. What have we 
that uh, PA's natural evasion, but that's going to be able to time come. Unless Navi can still the fight happen, Static Storm immediately lay down his arm and tries to go for the initiation. Countered up Navi with ultimate on cooldown, still kind of hanging around thinking maybe they can fight. General's going to be stunned. Up, oh, you get the crit, they got him! Corrosive Haze and immediately gets the crit. To fall one up, eliminating General, and now all bets are off. Navi, there's oh, no way to get an engagement going back in. High Cat's gonna be the extra cleanup with Flynn's back, and Secret take another four again. Uh, I mean, that is the beauty of Disruptor. Like, what's a bad pickoff turns into like a bad quote unquote team fire. Like, one should just be one kill from a good defensive play from Secret turns into four all of a sudden. I mean, the bottom lane was Navi on the aggressive, it was like Navi going for a pickoff. And you don't you think normally like a, a, a pickoff backfiring is normally like that one hero who goes in ends up dying and the rest of the team just get out. No, there's no escaping there against the disruptor and Secret are in a spot to break through a lane of Rax here. They are pretty short respawn timers and there is still global silence over Secret and that's where they're like, well, they're respawning, but we've got global silence. Here comes the epicenter, they're gonna try to blow up MP with all this magic damage. The global silence goes down, it's not oh it is enough. MP just get the blink away. Evades all the shots from the tower as well. Navi hold their tier three, but they wanted so much of that. That's why comes. No, he meant to just the sun, but it may not be enough. A good burrow strike comes in. Pycat fighting up against MP, but he can't win that engagement. Andy will finish him off. Gets a little bit of vengeance for his ally. But they need to be able to catch so much more. TPN, Pylai die going to be hot. Static Storm, tent at a TP away. Manage to make it out alive. A one for three, thanks in part to Pycat's ballsy ass uh, shrine TP. They're gonna be able to find a fourth yeah. one, it looks like. Puppy gets to kick out, roll away. He's gonna but jam. Men can blink in, slow down oh, by trap, and that is gonna be a gem going the way of not be. What a nasty turn of events after it's been secret, secret, secret yeah. back to back. Navi finally show a little bit of strength in them. I think you, you said it best earlier where talking about the silencer ult, you want to use it when you're the ones initiating and that's like first time where Navi get a really good initiation onto the PA. Like in the past we saw like there being a lift or a single stun and then there'd be a global silence and the PA doesn't take too much damage. This time it was full epicenter burrow strike. And by the time the glo like the global silence comes out, the PA is free on two third HP. Ideally they would kill the PA there, but they allowed to chase the PA because she can't fight. She's on 200, 300 HP. She ends up deciding, well, I can't run this, so I'm going to do my best, take a hero with, but Dendi cleans her up, so being able to initiate onto the PA with the epicenter seems like the the, the, the approach for Na'Vi to win a team fight. Like, they have to get PA down to, like, below half HP before the, the, the BKB is popped, because that means PA can't then reliably fight. There's a good chance that Dendi will be able to get up enough right clicks that they get the kill. And once there's an MKB, that PA is going to really struggle if she gets initiated on tanking. I think another thing that this says is that the backup carry, Mid One, who's been making some pretty decent progression in net worth after having a rough start. I, I was going to say, look, with the Shivas, all of a sudden he actually becomes a threat, but he still got blown up in that team fight despite the heavy yes. armor upgrade that he had. Yeah, I remember clicking before the. I'm like, oh, he's pretty tanky, he's got some good items, he's recovered, but. In the actual team fight itself, I felt like, yeah, I didn't see him. He didn't really have much of an impact. And only Navi again, these lanes pushed back out. They're getting eyes across their cores. Dendi's close to finishing his MKB. Pycat with a KB could be a game changer in itself. Defusal on the Weaver. Yeah, it's. I'm curious to see what this, this picks up. I guess you can use it to kind of look to cut around and also get the global silence off of a teammate, but not yourself. But, uh, yeah. Interesting little, little pick up. Radiant's this will scan the Radiant side. They are going to make their way over there with the smoke, it looks like. Uh, they run into the Roshan pit, find a Wildwing Ripper. I'm not sure if Kezu accidentally cl clicked on that one, but uh, they do chase away that Wildwing Ripper, yeah. and uh, he will not have as much information. Worth putting those traps, I think, instantly anyway, so not too big a deal. i got to imagine there's not anything like there's probably no no smokes left for secret now for the next roshan i guess navi still not having a bkb on pycat means this it will be hard for pycat to enter that next fight and he with an mkb oh boy if, if they can smoke and get the pa this could be this could be huge i think the crimson guard's going to protect protect against this amount of ta damage output 
All right, man. Right, man. You gotta make sure you do not get caught before this whole entire engagement goes. Pile I die. He's so just close with a glimpse. He's just oh out of range. Gosh. Uh, time blast was... is gonna be used by the Weaver. I felt so... a bit fortunate for our man. <laughs> I don't, don't think he needs to be making that play, pushing our mid lane. They gotta get in the first bit soon. They're gonna set it out again and gives them the intel that they need to go now. They know that flap is on cooldown. I think they want to force that engagement during this time. They need to get the burrow oh, the But the static storm, and they're actually going to go for it. They snatch up the Aegis on to mid one. He's going to fight this one out with MP against Pycat. Inside the pit, he's gone. And Navi have aborted this whole entire fight. Going to lose a couple more. That's going to be RMN going down. Maybe we'll see, hopefully not Dandy. Dandy can't get caught, yeah. that's for sure. It looks like they'll both get away. That was... Very, I mean, it's so hard to play those Roche fights when you're going in blind. Like, Sand King had to probably just pre-cast the Barra Strike post-blink, and he did hit the P with it. He only stunned the Silencer in the pit. He also didn't want to go for the, I think if he goes for the Epicenter, it could have go a bit better for him. But problem is that he's he's in plain sight. It's daytime. So if he goes for the Epicenter on that ramp, he gets seen doing doing it. Maybe he needs to... I think the, the there is to, like, cast the Epicenter from the Ancients area and then blink in from the Ancients into the Roche pit. But the bar strike, if he goes for that kind of a play, potentially it works out, but problem was Pycat swaps in, finishes Roshan, but Slada's there to, to stun him and prevent him picking up an Aegis, and Na'Vi are going to go back to defending and playing from the back foot now that there's an Aegis on the secret side. But is Aegis on the silence, sir? I'm not sure if that's really the hero they wanted to have the Aegis on. Yeah, I think uh, Na'Vi right now, anyway, especially with Global Silence on cooldown, they want to be able to focus down that MP first. Doesn't really feel like Silencer is that big of a threat. Yeah. Though maybe he will become a big threat with this next item in the Scythe device that will be a significant damage upgrade. Yeah. MP, on the other hand, b building in its Soul Crest, I think this is a, a must-buy item given what it's purely physical damage killing in these fights, so... The one item that's going to give him the extra bit of survivability as well as help out with damage output Dyer's top tower is under attack. push in from the bottom lane it kind of pushes from general Dyer's and be done with a lot more confidence with this fresh bkb picked up by him he's going to try and keep secret away from pushing into the high ground and forcing his potential your three ages scenarios that about actually crazy how much the itemization from secret is like it's it's out of the norm because they're just nearly countering the Navi physical damage. Like you've got the Slada going for a black with armlet, two very heavy armor items. You've got uh, the Earth Spirit going for the Crimson Guard into a casual chain. Mail. He's going to be going into a well, Solar Crest off of this. So everyone is itemizing differently because of the uh, the Navi lineup. Pull back on RMN. Puffle misses the kick there, but Kazu will be in place for the crush. Get a pick off. Is going to be very annoying though this game, and that's where it's like, well, you can itemize, you can have the team fight advantage, but you've got to be able to keep these lanes pushed out, which General is doing his best to make difficult. It's just about to say, I don't think that pick off the Sand King is going to be much. Not the uh, General split pushing. Like they get this but if they can get the kill onto Dendi, that'll be much bigger. Still have the refraction going, manage to get the blink away. A BKP going to be used. Back over to bottom lane. General fighting it out with Kazu. Pops his BKP. Diffuses up Kazu. Stop that sprint. Stopping his progression. Wow. Into the bait. And to pick up that kill. Time lapse away. Back over to mid. He's going out. Looks like they're going to try and cut downwards and catch General with this BKB on cooldown. Failing that. That was maybe so well played by Navi in the bottom lane. Like they. General's just sitting there, he knows sure is going to come for him, but he's got Biva behind him on the Rubik. Rubik comes in, gets the two men stunned with the telekinesis, and then steals the crush. Allows General to turn it around, get the kill, and get out. It does cost him a BKB charge, but it was like a good 500 extra damage under the tower. They get kill. They buy time to help this Aegis expire. Like, this is the kind of plays that will buy Navi time to extend this game. Them into a position where Bench can get some more items. And Pycat not going for the BKB, instantly going for the Lotus Orb. Wants to just get some extra and be able to instantly purge off some silences in a secondary way. I think we're getting to the point where the Disruptor is. The static Storm isn't as big of a problem, but Disruptor dies so early on in, on in a lot of these fights. So probably just feels like he can go for a different approach in terms of his items. I think in, in some ways, Pycat is become less of a presence with it comes to his physical damage. And, and much more secondary to Dendi. If yeah. he can't actually save Dendi, or be able to Lotus Orb and himself and then swap Dendi out, I think that may be better use of his life. 
Yeah. This feels like one of those uh, asset games almost on Avenger, you know, like you throw away your life true, to yeah. save a teammate and then you have, you still have your Avenger life. So you, you put the Vengeance Aura on the enemy and still have the Aura for your team. I mean, I was also kind of thinking in similar play. Oh, oh Mid one. How did he get caught out like this? Yeah. All these TPs up to the top lane have left Mid one alone in middle. That would be the Aegis down. Fortunately, Secret is not too far away. So it doesn't look like right, Nobby actually go for the second yeah. kill, but it is going to be the Aegis lost. It was expiring in five seconds, though. Uh, it, it's kind of a non-issue, but it's still like a... You don't like to see that because it, it's like... It's something that shouldn't happen even when it is just like an... Okay, that Aegis was about to expire anyways. It's a throw that you don't... It's it's a bit of a worrying sign secret when Navi are managing to out, out new your secret. But they will now target some of these shrines. Uh, it's going to have time to get to them, but definitely worth considering that. There's going to be another Roche head likely coming up. I don't see... Let's see... I'm not going to jump when a big team fight. This game is going to extend to that next road fight. And again, yeah. the split push at bottom lane is going to keep Secret busy. And pretty, not just bottom lane, but top lane is going to keep them constantly fending. Yeah, I think Secret... I think this might still be one of their better opportunities to uh, claim some objectives and force Navi attack. back, but maybe not. They're actually yeah, not going high ground immediately. Uh, in general, is already getting damage onto that tier 2. Very tough and try and force the TPs back Radiance by going to the high ground because of the Venge swap. You're so scared of that swap. MP put up on the cliff. <laughs> it helps. You give yeah. me a blink uh, phantom shrine. That's, I mean, it's a free T2 tower. Now, now V can take those shrines. Radiance Actually, no, there's a mid T2. Sorry about that. Uh, can't quite take the shrines, but it's still farm. It's still... Like, I feel like Na'Vi's getting a bit more farm out of the map, farming top and bottom right now. Although, yeah. with that said... Yule Scepter is himself, Burr Strike, Blink to, blink to the here. side, as long as he remains out of vision, they can't glimpse him! Nice. Radiant's bottom tower they is just under attack. Time. General is going to become uh, quite the threat here with all the foot pushing or because we went the double yes. defensive items. His damage hasn't been that threatening, but he is on the cusp of a fresh upgrade in damage. Radiant's middle tower Probably the MKB, I guess, against the PA. I I mean, the Deso is always a nice pickup, but against the PA, the MKB is definitely damage output. And yeah, Pycat skewed up the Ag Scepter after the Lotus Orb, so it looks like he's on the same page where it's not really... The, he's the utility carry. He's got to keep Dendi alive. Uh, and he, I mean, they've got plenty of damage output across their three cores. The Sanking Epicenter is going to start to kick in as a late-game damage dealer as well, so there's not pressure on Pycat to be a damage dealer. Oh, are man! Oh, God, just keep on doing wow. this, buddy. Just keep on buying your team time with these sort of plays. If you can actually get out, it'll even be better, but he is going to be glimpsed up. Has a blink up in a second, a burrow struck, but I don't think he can have a chance to use it. That is still five That's... members of Secret in the bottom lane, and they're all going to have to TP or play somehow oh. defensively. They make some coming pike at though. Kick? Is it in time? Oh, Pycat yeah. gets nailed just before the TP can complete. Pycat pops a Lotus Orb, turns and fights, hoping to be able to get at least one, but Puppy is leaving close to death. He gets that one. General almost gets the tier two in mid on that one, opening up the shrines, but not quite. Yeah. It's actually so strange. It's like one of the new counters to split pushing is these shrine TPs. It's like, all right, yeah. they get behind me, and then like you're threatening to push a T3 town and suddenly there's like two heroes behind you and you're like oh wait that's right they can TP the shrines nowadays and Pycat's A there would have been totally fine like the standard right play to make on any other pre 7.0 patch but the shrine are is undoing as puppies able to get in there in time to cancel that TP out or even having BKB he could uh, BKB yeah. TP out I still feel like yeah the missile. BKB over the Lotus Orb would have made a bit more so the Lotus Orb is team or item but and it will help against this hex like if someone like dendy gets hexed and initiated on it he means can help him out but i think he can help him out by swapping him that's the thing if he has a b he could swap him out and then pop a bkb so i i, I don't necessarily feel like a lotus orb was a necessary item pick up this game do you ever because we talked about the ags on um potential spirit and i i think it was a good suggestion pycat seems to agree so he's trying to pick that item up now do you think the ag on weaver is ever going to be a, a thing that we talk about for this game, or should we just build straight damage? Hold on, RMN goes on a pilot die. Abyssal Blade goes out, and Pete is going to be able to collect this kill. Looks like with it back into a crush, RMN has no hope of escape, and Secret are slowly but surely 
hitting Navi out of position more and more and keeping the lanes relatively pushed in at the same time. Yeah, this is a good chain to pick off. Seeker, I think, starting to figure the game out a bit better now with their ability to find these split pushes. I, I think they were prioritizing too much just pushing on one thing and now they're like, okay, we have to just send out two or three heroes, go get these kills, and then go back to pushing. Even if it means we're not breaking high ground, just punish Na'Vi. Like, you can't let Na'Vi just walk all from multiple lanes, get a free T2 tower top, have you chase them around, like with this Sand King, Yules, blinking around, like you've got to make sure you get these kills, even if you're not getting Raxes. Set yourself up to perhaps go for a Rax with the next just um, but back on the topic of the Ags for Weaver, mm -hmm. I, I think there's too much pressure to actually do damage this game. I don't. I think he's going to be too slot limited to... If for Na'Vi to win, in my mind, for Na'Vi to win, it's going to take a six-slotted Weaver and a six-slotted TA. Yeah. Do so you just I, want this general to go for full damage then? Yeah, the, the Ags could be nice. Maybe it saves Stendi one fight, but they've got to do maximize their damage output in that small window where they like pop their BKBs in the fight. And I think going like an MKB into Thorn or something is going to be a, a better way to approach this game. Yeah, I, I completely agree. The way I see it is that in, in the beginning of the team, either Weaver or Vengeful Spirit could turn into that support utility role with the Ags, yeah, or yeah. in this case, the Swap. But once you've made that commitment, one of them has to be full damage. In this case, General's yep. got to take over the damage oh, output easy. that Dendi will eventually drop off, right? Templar Assassin is not the be-all, end-all event late game. It's a nice damage dealer, but it is still susceptible uh, to initiation. It does have that nice plus three refraction instances now, which is oh, one true. of the better level 25 talents for parries that there are in the game, though. So see what he can... Well, we won't, we won't necessarily obviously see the impact of that, but it does make it a bit harder for the PA. Those Most of those Blink's Phantom Strike attacks will get blocked by the refraction at the start of the fight. And be very pesky. Oh no, he didn't get the blink off in time. Uh, 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 oh, okay. Timed it perfectly. Did you see that? Yeah. Blinked at the same time as Glimpse. So. What a we godly actually... play. Yeah. <laughs> that is like some amazing time. I'm sure there's like a tiny bit of luck involved with that as well. Like, when they're going to get that one in a hundred times, <laughs> but that was the one in a hundred. I was just like, what the hell? All right. <laughs> oh, so. Navi, they're, they're going to wrap around. This could. Completely catch Secret by surprise. It looks like it just might MP. But Secret have the high ground advantage. Yeah. As long as they keep heroes in this area, they're good. But as soon as they Hold start it. going downhill, yeah. it could get bad, Navi. The courier walks past. They know they can go uphill now. Oh, God. They have so this much good information. It's such a good opportunity to find this initiation. Get the quick kill. But Pilot Tai spots him out. The Kezu. He gets the three man crush. The static storm follow up. Pup. Some combo stuns, Pycat, it's gonna get dropped, and so is Dendi! They have no response, RMN comes in with the epicenter, but it's not gonna do enough! All the magic damage is on, and General trying to get away now, but he may be caught as well. MP locks him down, gets the Bash Dagger, and they finish him off. It will be the last one alive. Five down from Na'Vi, Secret went from taking Roshan to potentially being countered by him. And all of a sudden, they can ignore Roshan if they want to and just go high ground. And that initially looked so good, but Hezu with the split second reaction instantly blink crashes, catches out three. That was some impressive play and react coming out from his Sladar. And I think it was the courier kill that kind of revealed their position there as well. Like, they kind of showed their hand by killing that courier, and then they didn't. They need it. I think it's Navi who have to make that split second jump. The second they see, like, they're on the high ground, they see here, they blink crush and delete a hero right away with the TA. Pop the BKB and just stand your ground and fight, but. Secret, the, the team willing to take the initiative, get rewarded for it, and this is going to be multiple lanes of racks. Weaver's buyback means this could just be straight up mega creeps. They could. 30 seconds left. Templar Assassin, Dendi may be forced to buy back on such a low death timer. That is going to be the worst feeling ever, but it's going to be worse than just watching you get megas like this. Midplay racks are going to be dropping low now. 14 seconds till the Weaver comes up. Dendi immediately gets stunned up, and the Lotus Orb does a lot of work. It already sights the vice up. You want Ank out the sun onto both the MP, but he still managed to complete up. Dendi keep on going. Glimpse back. Pothead to be the next court. He gets dropped, and right as Weir comes alive, he finds his team. He's already called the GP. Navi will lose game two to Secret. We will see another game three. A couple of really good mid game 
fights from Seeker. I mean, they had to recover this game, I feel like. Na'Vi had a... I mean, they had a good start. Like, yeah, they died a couple of times to ganks, but it was mid one who really died at the crucial times. Na'Vi secured themselves that first ages, but Na'Vi just kind of rushed things a bit. Like, they were fighting before PyCat had the defensive Manta or BKB, uh, and a couple 